Uh, I had a whole message that I was going to preach, and, and I got here early, and God changed what I was going to preach, and I said, God, what are you doing to uh, I had a whole, and yesterday, it started yesterday, when a prayer meeting, I was over here, and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, get your Bible. So I got my Bible. I said, what, God? And, you know, and I prayed, and I said, what do you want me to preach? He said, just tell my people that I'm coming. I said, they know that. I said, I want you to preach that I'm coming. I said, you know, here I am. I've been in the church all my life, so I think, okay, God, yeah, we know what time you know. And I want to preach something that no one's ever heard, you know, and challenge. He says, preach that I'm coming. I want, you, I want you to tell them that I'm coming. For real. For real he's coming. Not, not just biblically, not just church-wise he's coming, but for real he's coming. He's coming. He's on his way. There's nothing left for the rapture. There's no prophecy left for the rapture to take place today. There's prophecy left for him to come back second time, coming, second coming. Set his foot on the Mount of Olives. There's prophecy left for that. Before, if we believe pre-tribulation rapture, which is what I believe, you may believe mid or post, whatever. I believe pre-tribulation rapture. I think by Revelation chapter 7, we're gone. Church-wise. I believe that. Yeah. I believe there's scripture to back that up. I, I believe there's common sense to back that up. The, the church is supposed to be what? The bride of bride of Christ, right? And, I, and I've, I've used this example before, but you guys, it fits good here. The night before Naomi and I got married, I didn't go punch her in the face and say she really loved me. <laughs> Which is what they, what to me is to make the church go through the tribulation. To see if they can withstand. To me, that's like punching your wife in the face before you're married. To see if she really loves you. I don't think you guys looking for a, Jesus is looking for a beat-up bride to take. I think he's looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Hey, do you believe this? How many of y'all got punched in the face? How many brides got punched in the face? Okay, that's about, yeah. Well, that's what my husband did to me. I, 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 as, as Jesus is the, is the husband of the church and the bridegroom of the church, I don't believe he's going to come and smack us around to make sure we really love him. I think he's going to be able to know whether we love him or not. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Very familiar passage of scripture. I promise I, promise I won't keep you 100 years or anything. I sang longer than we normally sing a man I had to sing because he lives. I haven't sang that song in so long. I love that song. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Anybody know what it says? It is now. And for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Keep going. Keep on. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Keep going. Uh, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. If you will, go to chapter 15. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then such as destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Ye, brethren, are not in darkness. How many have ever heard Jesus is coming? Four of us. Great. Okay. Jesus is coming. We've heard that. How many have ever read this passage of Scripture? Amen. Then you don't know, listen, then you are not in darkness. You know. Don't go to hell with your eyes wide open. Understand what's going on. That, listen, ye, but ye brethren are not in, the, in darkness, that, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Amen. He's writing this and saying, Paul's writing this and saying, I don't need to tell you this, you should already know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Hello? You should already know this. Here's the deal. You know that Jesus is coming as a thief in the night. We can go to the scriptures in Matthew and we can go to the scriptures of Luke. Then he comes 
the, the thief comes and, the, and he binds the straw man. The straw man knew he was coming. They wouldn't be ready. Remember? He'd be ready for him. He wouldn't be able to bind him. Okay, we can go there, but I don't have time to do that right now. But, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Okay, verse, verse uh, 5. You're all the children of the light, and the children of day are not of the night nor of darkness. How many of you are saved? I guess nobody knows I have church on Sunday or Wednesday. It's our state youth director texting me. Really? <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. You are all the children of light, and the children of the, uh, the you are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of, of night nor of darkness. Keep going. Verse six. Therefore, let not let us not sleep. As do others, but let us watch and be sober. That word sober just means alert. It doesn't mean not drunk. It means alert. Let us therefore watch and be sober or be alert. Know what's going on around you. The Middle East, all it needs is a match thrown on it and it'll blow up. And someone's going to throw a match. It's true. West Nile and Oklahoma and Dallas. That's probably a coincidence. Nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Pestilence. All these things happening. Floods. The hurricanes. Stuff, I mean, really, I mean, and I know it's hurricane season and that happens. I get it. But you see all those poor people in Haiti? They're living in a cardboard box with a tarp over it. They're right out the hurricane. Dear God, I thank God I live here. Thank God I live here. I can get out of the way of a stinking hurricane. They're, they're stuck on an island. What are they going to do? They're going to get blown away. Is what's going to happen. The hurricane's coming. Listen. i got to keep reading. Sorry. What time do I need to get out of here? It's 8.30 now. What time? I, I, just give me a time. Because I, I mean, I got, I'm not trying to keep you forever. Let's go. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Keep going. For a but let us who are of the day be sober or alert, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and, and for the a helmet of hope of salvation. Verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. One more time. Who died for us, that whether we, we be wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Stop right there for just a second. Listen. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, he says, For the Lord himself will send ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead of Christ shall rise first. And then when we turn alive and remain, shall be caught up with him in the air, in the clouds, and meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, cover one another with these words. Okay? Hear me. People get confused about this, and I don't want you to get confused. Go back to 4.16, please. <clears throat> For the Lord himself will descend with heaven and the shadow of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead Christ shall rise first. Who's going to rise first? Dead Christ rise. Next one. <clears throat> then we which are alive and remain should be caught up together with them. Who? <laughs> Who? Who's the them? <laughs> the dead Christ in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Period. The rapture of the church takes place. The dead in Christ are gone, then we are gone. The church is gone. Here, we're ever, forever with the Lord. Then, chapter 5. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> it says cover each other with those words. Okay, chapter 5. For the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write unto you. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3. Now he's describing. Okay. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. This as travail upon the woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Time out. Go back to four. Back to three. For they 
For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon the earth. Who's them? The people that are left. Be with me. We have the dead in Christ, those who shall remain. We go to the Lord, we meet forever with the Lord. Right? Now if I'm going too fast, let me know. Right? When they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, those that are left, as shall fell upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Escape what? Tribulation. Hear me? Verse 4. But you, this hasn't happened yet, so he's not talking to them again. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. Does that make sense? I want to make sure you're, that I'm making sense here. That that day should overtake you as a thief. He said, okay, look, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen. And those that are left are not going to escape. Then he goes back to talking to the people who are going to be raptured. Back, back to the church. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That, that that day should not overtake you as a thief. You should know what's going on. Right, that's, right. Yeah, amen. that's what he's saying. Okay, verse 5. You're not children of the... Uh, you, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of night or darkness. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. That's right. Amen. Okay. Just trying to make sure... I, wanna, I don't want to confuse... Now, Shadar Valley coming here and just rattles this stuff off and everybody goes, what? And, and, and you have to really study and, and know what's going on because he talks fast because he's crazy. All right, in verse, verse 6... Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. He said, look, don't sleep on what's going on in your life. Know what's up. Don't bury your head in the sand and say, well, the Lord's just going to take care of it. Yeah, he will. And, and, and everything's going to happen according to his plan. True. But know where you're at in the scripture. Okay. Yeah, amen. Okay, okay. Go with me to... Marker. Here it is. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. I'm trying to hurry. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. It's 3. 3, 9, 10. Sorry. Did I say 2? 2 Peter 3, 9, 10. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As men count slackness, some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. All, all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away in the great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It's easy for me to say. Okay. Go back to 9 4. The Lord is not slack concerning this promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us. Aren't you glad God is long suffering? <coughs> not willing that any should perish. Hear me. Listen. Church, Jesus is coming. I was reading an article today. In my generation, Mike's generation, Teresa's generation, our lessons, 40 somethings. <laughs> that's 40 somethings. Of the last generation, they got to play outside. Yeah, amen. It's true. That's true. We're the last generation that got to ride our bikes all over town. Amen? Amen. We're the last generation that had us and our teachers grew up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Our school teachers. 30s, 40s, and 50s. They had a godly background. They were godly people. Amen? Amen. Can you say that about now? I don't, I don't know. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm saying they came from a different generation than the school teachers that come now. It's not, it's not pointing. I said, I have teachers all in my family. I'm not pointing fingers at teachers. They're wonderful people. I'm, not, I'm just saying, the education is different. Yeah. Uh, that has nothing to do with pointing fingers at teachers. I'm not doing that. Pointing fingers at the educational system. 
somewhere in the 1970s, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And so somewhere in that time period, a, a switch was flipped and the world turned upside down. And I can't let my babies play outside. I can't if I'm out there. I can't if I got an eight foot security fence with barbed wire on top of it. They can't ride their bikes down the street. I guess they could, but you're putting your child's life in your hands. I, I can't let them go all over town. I rode a 10-speed bicycle all over this town when I was a kid. All over the place. I threw newspapers on, a, on, a, on two bicycles and two motorcycles and all by myself. All over this town. And nobody thought anything about it. Now, I would let my son walk from my house to Northwood and even three blocks. Not by himself. He's 12 years old. You know why? Because I'll never see him. You know, some, some freak could pick him up, I'll never see him again. I might see parts of him, but I wouldn't see him again. But you're just living in fear. I ain't living in fear. That's just being smart. That's my baby. You know, I'm, just, I'm just telling you. You got to know what time you're living in and who it is. And, then, and we live in Seminole. I mean, I can't imagine living in Chicago or New York or anywhere that's crazier. Oklahoma City, I can't imagine. Shawnee's even crazier than it. And hear me. All, all I'm reading you tonight is I'm just trying to get you to understand that somewhere in the 70s and 80s, a, a switch was flipped and this thing turned upside down. And evil is, is, is considered good and good is considered evil. And we're in Bizarro world. Anybody ever read Superman comic books and had Bizarro, which was everything was backwards? Good was evil. Nobody knows I'm talking about Tristan. Yeah. Uh, and then Bizarro, Bizarro had a backwards ass on his chest. And we're good right here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just making sure. I, I, I thought, surely everybody knows who Bizarro is. Okay. And, 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 and everything was just flipped upside down. It's like we live in Bizarro world. Where, where if you're good, you're considered wrong. If, you, if you're evil, you're considered you're elevated. If you, if you do the right thing, then you're stupid. If you do the wrong thing, then you're elevated. And, I, and, I, and, then, and if you steal and cheat and get all the all you can, you're, you're, you're a hero. But if you do the right thing, then you're considered stupid. <laughs> I'm saying. Hear me? Because here's the, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Somewhere... A switch was flipped, and Jesus is coming. My generation was the last generation to get taught by God that men and women that loved God. I'm going to say they all did. A lot of them did. They got an education for people who grew up in the 20s and 30s. And the people that taught me, because listen, those folks was old when I was young. My, my first grade teacher's name was Mrs. Cowell. Her. Little old lady about this big. I don't know how I don't know how old she was, but she was retirement age, I know. <laughs> she was. She was my first grade teacher. We loved her. We would all kiss her on the cheek when we left the day, left, left the class today. Every day. Because she loved us. We felt like that lady loved us. And I'm talking about school teacher. We felt and, and listen, you didn't have to worry about her sleeping with other students, did you? That is the most craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. What is wrong with me? You can't even send a kid to school now. And so, I told her, I told Becky it's her fault. She was in McLeod and old girl was at McLeod doing that, and then she teaches in Bethel, old girl's doing that. I said, Becky, you, you just, you got people, Becky and the sister law, she's teaching. Anyway, I said, you just, you got, you're in the wrong schools, girl. Remember the girl, the lady took pictures of the girls at Christmas tree and things, sent them to Uncle Freak? <laughs> Whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She's from class when Becky taught the class. She said, oh, Lord. It's, it is horrible. And now she's at, at uh, Bethel, and old girl's sleeping with some kid all summer long. Her, her husband was some kind of youth pastor or some church, and they got to, and it's just horrible. When did, the, when did that become okay? When did that, when is this, when did, 
We get in our head. It's all about me. It ain't about anything else but me. And here's the thing. I know I'm off, I'm off subject, but you know me. Okay, here's the deal. The Lord is not slack as His promises. Some may count slack, but it's long-suffering to us. I thank God that God is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish. Yeah. It's not God's will that anybody should perish, but that all should come to, the, come to repentance. Go to verse 10 for me. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away, and with great noise, and in the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and all the works, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. One more for me. 11. Seeing then that, that all these things shall be the, the dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I don't mean talking. That means your lifestyle. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We can't stop there. You know why? There's a comma. Go, one more. Looking for and hastening unto the, I couldn't see it, close. And hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall be melted with fervent heat. How should we live then? If we believe this, how then should we live? Go back one more verse, 11. He tells us how we should live. He's asking a question, but he's answering a question in this question. In what manner of persons ought we to be? Should I be able to see something change in your life? Yes. yes. I shouldn't say, well, I'm going to the temple of praise while I'm cussing somebody and while I'm getting a, my, my favorite six-pack or whatever. While I'm lying on somebody else, while I'm going to see my homosexual lover. Yeah. Hear me? There ought to be a difference. There's got to be a change. I know those are all extremes. I get that, okay? But hear me. I, I, I use that for an example. Just, and we have little things in our life that we need to get out of our life too because they kill us just as bad as the big things. It's the little things that spoil the fire, right? Okay. Little foxes, okay? Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought I to be in my conversation or my lifestyle? In my godliness? What happened to us? What happened to holiness? What happened to... See, holiness has a bad connotation to it. When someone says holiness, they think judgmental. Self-righteous. That's not what holiness is. Holiness isn't the, the, the length of your skirt or your hair. It has nothing to do with it. Holiness, what it is, is having God in your life to where you're living a godly lifestyle, a godly, doing everything. God, okay, God, is this what you'd have me to do today? God, is this what, God, I want to be right with you, Father. I want to ask everything. God, I'm asking you every day to direct my path because I want to make sure I'm doing what you ask me to do. Being set aside. Godliness. Holiness. I want to live right. I want to spend some time with God every day. How hard is that? It's not hard to make. Um, let's go. Um, let, me, let me get back here. Some more and I'm trying to quit. I promise. I'm trying to find a good place to quit. Uh, verse 13 says, Nevertheless, 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 we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwells, dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot. You see, I, I start reading this thing and it starts messing me up. Just leave me alone, Lord, just let me go. I'm good. I know. I, 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 can, I, can, I can name you the Ten Commandments, God. I'm good. Just leave me alone. Then Paul starts writing people. He starts messing me up. He said, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Hear me. I think I said Peter. I, mean, I think I said Paul and Peter. Listen. 
I have to find a place to quit. Go back to 14 for me. Thank you. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such, a, for such things, what things? The things we just read, a new heaven, a new earth, and holiness, and righteousness, and be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. How does that happen? Salvation. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm never, ever in my life going to be good enough to be righteous before God. But God himself makes me righteous through the blood of Jesus through that cross. That's how. i got to tell you, guys, we're never going to make it without Jesus in that cross. We're never going to make it without God the Father dipping us in the blood of Jesus Christ and cleansing. We're never going to be good enough. We're never going to make We've got to run to that cross on a daily basis and say, Jesus, I know I messed up and I know I'm dirty and I need some help. I know I'm not righteous enough, but God, I want to be sober. I want to be vigilant because I know you're coming. Listen, church, i got to tell you, i gotta, I got a word from God today. Jesus is coming. And I know a hundred million people have said that. And I know a thousand preachers have preached it. And probably a thousand have preached it from this pulpit. But Jesus is coming. And we've got to have these things in our lives or we ain't going. I don't want you to be here. When the dead Christ rise, and those that are alive and remain to go and meet with Jesus in the air, I don't want you looking up and trying to jump. I don't want you looking up knowing inside you as the Holy Ghost takes us out of here and you feel the emptiness in your spirit as the Holy Ghost is drawn out of this world. And God removes his spirit from, and the devil has free reign. Hear me. I want you here. I want you to be able to point at me and say, Jeff never told me God, you allowed me to have a pastor that didn't care enough about me to tell me that there's a devil's hell. There's a hell that's shown in the heaven to gain. I don't want anybody to ever say that I had a pastor that didn't tell me that Jesus was coming. That I just walked through this life blindly. And I never knew. My God, church, if I don't ever get anything across to you, if we don't ever get the, my past, my, my present, my future, we don't ever get any of that stuff, we don't ever get that the God had a, that the woman at the well had a Jesus encounter, and, and long before he, she was ever thought of, they dug that well just so Jesus could meet her at that specific time and place. If we don't ever get that, that's fine. And as long as we get this, I got to have the blood of Jesus at the cross of Calvary on my life in order to be right with him. And if, if none of you ever get baptized with the Holy Ghost, that's that's not good, but it's okay. I, because as long as you got the blood of Jesus in your life, I want you to get saved. I want you to pray through on to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I want you to get there. But I want you most of all to do what Jesus paid that, that price for, which is get saved, have, have, have salvation in your, have that helmet of salvation on. I want you to be ready more than anything else. If we never get to build a building for the youth, and never get to build a, a bigger church for the, for the church, and none of that stuff ever gets accomplished, as long as this one thing is accomplished, the people that are sitting in this building that come in this building get saved and are ready to go and go win somebody for the Lord. It'll be worth it. I just want you to understand. I want you guys to understand. Jesus is coming faster than we ever think. And I know in your spirit, the devil's already talking to you and saying, yeah, I've heard something. Yes, you have. You're going to hear it again. Maybe. You might not. This might be the last time. This might be the last time. You may walk out of here and never hear this message again because I may not. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going first look. I ain't waiting around. There ain't nothing here to hold me. Amen. I love my wife and my kids, but they can stay if they want. So I'm going. I've come too far to go back now. I, I, I've gone. I, I've come. I, I've gone around circle after circle. I've been in that desert long enough. I'm ready to go. I, I've seen Jericho, and I've seen I've seen the the promised land, and I, I understand. I, I, I've been there, and I, I I turned my back and went into a wilderness for for, for a little while. But I, I'm telling you, I, I've come too far back to go back the other way. I'm ready to go. 
the Bible didn't say, listen, I, I need to so cool. I'm so glad my mom and dad are here. Listen, the Bible doesn't say to be scared when you see these things happen. He said, comfort one another with his word. Because Jesus is coming. It's not a scary thing to me. It's a scary thing to those that ain't ready. It's a scary thing to those halfway in, halfway out. You hope he comes on the halfway day that you're in. It's a scary thing for those that, are, that, are, that, that think that I, I, I can just sin for just a little bit longer. I got a little bit longer. I got a little bit longer. I got a little bit longer. They're going to push the envelope too far. And Jesus is going to come and they're going to be lost. You hear me? I would never preach this because I can't, I haven't, uh, have not researched it enough. I'm getting there. How's the only way you're going to get saved in the tribulation period? Anybody know? Life how? Hey, come on. I'm not saying anything, but there's one religion in this world that's the favorite thing to do. To the infidels. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Amen. I can't preach it because I ain't researched it enough. I would never preach anything I never researched enough. I don't know see it. <laughs> but you may go research it yourself. Just saying. Just saying. Hear me. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you say, I don't know, you ain't ready. If you say, maybe you ain't ready. You say could be, you ain't ready. You say hope so, you ain't ready. You got to know, they used to call it knowing your knower. I got to know in my knower already. I know in my knower. Amen? Anybody got knower? I got knower. Thank you, Jesus. They asked Jesus when the end time will be, and he said, be in the days of Noah. Like the days of Noah, right? You ever researched the days of Noah? When the angels, the fallen angels had mingled with the people and made a hybrid people? Yeah. Demons that had, had, had influenced people's lives. Demons had infest, infested the people and had, had a, what's the word I'm looking for? Possessed them. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to say, I'll, I'll catch you loose. Watch the video today. I still have Michael about this. I'm right, sure Michael. Watch the video. This was 2008. I didn't hear anything about it. I, I usually hear about stuff like this. I didn't hear anything about it. Two Swiss women, they're twins, were walking down a highway in uh, Great Britain. And Great Britain has cameras all over highways, and they all, they, so they can observe traffic. And they saw the people who were observing this. Oh, we got two people, they need, they need help. We'll go send a police car and get them out of the danger because they're. It's an eight-lane highway, and there's four lanes on either side, and they're walking between the two lanes. When the police car pulls up, they run into traffic and get hit by cars. Some going 45, some going 65 miles an hour. They hit them. The girls get up. Okay? One purpose. They run into the traffic on purpose. They get up, and the police get them to the side. What are y'all doing? And, and, and as one, and the reason they have this on video is because they're doing a show called like Cops. They call it Cops. I don't know what they call it. But they had these people just happen to be the police officer they're riding with, and they have this video. They have this camera, and they're, and they're filming this. The two sisters are standing on the side, and one police officer is talking to these two, and you can see behind them in the background this lady rip rip loose from this cop and runs right underneath the semi truck trailer, and she lives. She has compound fractures on her legs, but she's trying to get up. The other sister breaks loose and runs into headlong into another car, bashing her head and bending the top of the car, and the windshield is crushed, and she gets up. And she lives. They get her again. She breaks free again, runs right out of the traffic again, gets hit a third time, and gets up. The one lady who has compound fractures in her legs and that bones is nasty. 
And you can see her get caught up in the wheels of the semi truck. It's just nasty. And she's still living. They finally try to restrain this lady. It takes six people to restrain her as she's cussing, spitting, and kicking people as they try to restrain her. My first thought is, this girl's on drugs. No drugs in her system, no alcohol in her system. No, no. They take her, they, they, they sentence her to one day in jail for assaulting a police officer and, and trespassing on a motor highway. So she gets time served. She gets out, she stabs a man seven times, <clears throat> runs, they have her on camera on this, on this other highway, running down the road, jumps off a 50-foot bridge onto traffic, does not die yet again, ankles are broken, and she has a skull fracture from hitting herself in the head with a hammer as she's walking down the road. It's, you can look it up. It's called Madness on, in the Fast Lane, BBC. Look it up. It's on YouTube. Okay, the lady doesn't, she doesn't die then. They have no explanation for why she acts this way. Two women doing the same exact thing. I've got an explanation. Only a possessed person. Yeah. I'm not talking about something I don't know. I've been around possessed people before, and it's just free. Only a possessed person can get ran over by a car three times, jump off a 50 foot bridge and get ran over, bash yourself in the head with a hammer, and still live. Then left to stab somebody, kill somebody, and spend time in prison. As the days of Noah were, when demons, so shall the days of the Son of Man's second coming. We're there, guys. But I don't believe stuff like that happens. I don't, you know, you believe what you want. It happens. As a young man growing up in this church and seeing someone slither up like a snake, I'm not kidding. the show Supernatural? Okay. You, you ever see the black stuff that comes out of their mouth and they, they uh, cast the devils out? Yeah. Saw it right here in this church. Prayer meeting. Not that much, not that extreme. Black stuff. Toop! Hit a bob, disappear. Been there. Mm -hmm. Seen it. Right here. I'm trying to freak you out, but it does happen. Does happen. Had a prayer meeting on a Tuesday night. You want to talk about giving you creeps, man? It was time to go. It was time for this little 14 year old kid to get out. And I did. I'm just telling, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to tell you, try to, I'm not evangelistically speaking. I'm talking about stuff I know. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm just telling you stuff that I know. That's just, and we, that's just a smidgen of stuff that goes on. We don't have a clue. We just go through our life. We don't have a clue. Most Christians don't ever deal with the devil, really. So we just kind of scoot our way through life and pray for bigger houses and make more cars. True. True. But my assignment today is just simply to tell you this. Jesus is coming. As the days of Noah were, so shall the days of the coming of the man be, the son of man be. The devils rule the place. A bizarre world, man. Flip. The switch was flipped. Evil became good, good became evil. Right became wrong, and wrong became right. Anything goes, became anything goes. There's no absolute truth. There's no absolute yes or no. Or absolute right or wrong. Yeah. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Stand your feet with me. I didn't mean to freak you out. Shut up. Listen. Uh, I want to thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be the pastor of this church. 
you guys are so good. Hey, listen, I, and I don't mean to keep you till nine o'clock on Wednesday. I know it's, it's, it's hard. It is. I get it. I gotta get up early too. So I get it. But I thank you for your faithfulness to be in the house of God on Wednesday night. Most people don't come to church on Wednesday night. And I thank you for that. I really do. It's a blessing to me. All you workers that have been here for four hours now, thank God for you. Thank you. You're awesome. I love you. All you guys that pray and pray for my family and I and pray for this church, thank you. I appreciate it. But listen, know where you're at. Open this up. And know where you're at, according to Scripture. Know where we're going. Don't go, don't fall, don't go into the future blind. There's a road map. Know where you're going. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Come to follow Lord. I thank, I thank you for this time. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for everything that you've done. Father, you're so wonderful to me. I hope that I've done justice to what you had me to do today, God. I thank you for everything that you've done in my life. And I thank you for this church and this body of believers. Father, help us to be what you called us to be. Help us to be ready. We know you're quickly coming. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for being here. I love you so much. <laughs> okay.